So, now from here we will move on to yet another way of learning word representations which is known as the glove representations. So, the count based methods rely on global co-occurrence counts from the corpus for computing word representations. Okay, that is what we saw in SVD. They look at these co-occurrence counts and from there they build the word representations. The predict based models set up a learning problem where you have this feed forward net network and it tries to predict certain things from the given words and then you learn the parameters of that network and you set up the task in such a way that the parameters actually correspond to word representations. So, this was the difference between count and predict based methods. Now, what is the obvious next thing to do? I hear the answer from a few of you, but I want to hear it from everyone. What is the obvious next thing to do? You have count based methods, you have predict based methods. Combine the two, right? So, come up with some kind of a hybrid. So, that is exactly what GLOVE does, which is known as global vectors. So, I will go back to the co occurrence matrix. So, remember x i j encodes the important global information about the word i and j and whether you replace it by PMI or PPMI or just keep the counts, it just gives you some information about how many times these two words actually appeared together. Okay? So, x i j encodes this global information and I call it global because it is computed from the entire corpus. Fine. Why not learn word vectors which are faithful to this information? So, what do I mean by that? Suppose V i is the representation of the i th word and V j is the representative of the j th word which I want to learn. I do not have these representations, I want it to learn. Now, this gives me the dot product between them which gives me the similarity between them. Why not I set up my task in such a way that this similarity is actually proportional to this probability. So, what does the similarity tell us how well these two go together? What does P of j given i tell us? How likely j is given i? Right. So, does that make sense to have this analogy that the dot product tells me the similarity. The other notion of similarity is that how likely j is to appear in context of i which is given by P of j given i. So, why not set up my task such that whatever vectors I learn are actually faithful to this global similarity that I have computed from the entire corpus. How many of you get this intuition? Okay. How many of you see the difference between this and the predict based models? In the prediction based models you are operating at one word pair at a time. Here you are looking at these global counts. Okay, you are trying to directly learn vectors which are faithful to your global similarity as given by your co-occurrence counts. Do you get the merger between the two methods? You should not get it yet because we still have to do something. Or at least you get the intuition. Okay. Now, what is P of j given i? It is actually this. Okay. So, I can write it as this okay. and similarly I can write the other guy V j transpose V i and that is going to be different because that is going to have P i given j instead of P j given i. So, I will have log x i j is fine, but instead of x i I will have x j here. How many of you get this? Fine. Now, if I add these two equations so, I am going to add this equation and this equation. So, on the left hand side I just get 2 times V i transpose V j because V i transpose V j is the same as V j transpose V i and on the right hand side I get certain quantities. So, this is what I would actually want my word vectors to look at look like. I would want my word vectors to be such that when I take their dot product they give me the quantity on the right hand side and this quantity has come based on counts learned from the corpus. So, I have counts on the right hand side and I have learnable parameters on the left hand side. So, you see how we are merging these two, but how do you learn this problem now? It is okay to say what I have what I have said now is that this is what I desire. I desire that my word vectors should be learned in such a way that they are faithful to the global counts through the following equation. This is what I desire. Desiring something is one thing, but now how do I set this up as a learning problem? So, when I ask you what is the learning problem, what do you need to think about? Objective function, good. That is a good start. So, what is the objective function for this? What are the parameters of the optimization? You are optimizing with respect to what? The V i's and the V j's, right? All the word representations. How many of those do you have? V each of size k. So, those are your parameters for optimization. Now, what is the loss function? If I give you the loss function, it will look very, very obvious, but I do not want to do that. 
So, just continue thinking about that while I will make some more simplifications to what we have here. Now, what is this count? This is the co occurrence count, how many times these two occur together. What is this count? The number of times the word i appears. So, this depends only on i. What is this count? The number of times the word g appears. Okay. So, to make the model more flexible, that means give it some more freedom, what I am going to do is instead of log x i and log x j, I am going to introduce parameters b i and b j. Okay. I am saying that these parameters can also be learned. So, effectively using all these three, I should be able to get this. This is what I desire. Now, set up the loss function using these two things. Come on, that should not be so hard. What is this? This is what you are trying to predict. What is this? This is what you know is true because you have computed from the corpus. Now, can you say the loss function? The difference between these two, right? So, you could have this as the loss function. This is the predicted value using models parameters. This is the actual value computed from the corpus. So, think of this that you are trying to learn the parameters in such a way that you end up predicting this. And if you have predicted this, you know you have done the right thing. Okay? And this you know already because you have computed it from the corpus. So, this is the true value and this is the predicted value. So, as in any loss function, predicted minus true the whole square. Does that make sense? How many of you are fine with this? So, now how will you train this network? Gradient descent, right? So, you will use gradient descent and you will get these parameters. So, there is a bit more on this which I will not cover actually. So, I will just skip this slide. You can go back and take a look at it. It is just some uh, slight modifications to this. Yes, so again the same idea, right? Cat will go close to all the. Uh, so, here again you will have the V i and the U c's, right? So, you will have cat will come close to all the words that it co occurs with. Feline will also come close to the same words. So, maybe I have not used the right uh, notation here. Uh, if we need to change it again, so we should have V i's and U j's, right? So, again you have one word matrix, word representations, and the other is the context representation. Then it is fine, right? That is the problem here. How many if you get that? Right. Again, we have to have these two things. Okay. So, just change that everywhere. 